Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for the weekly wrap-up for this Friday, January 19th, 2024. It's been an interesting show week this month. Uh, this week, we had a new um, interview with Upfront and the Prophetic with Francine and John. They did a great job, and we had to break up in parts because, as you saw, it was a fairly long video and detailed. Uh, we pray that you got some useful information and some uh, genuine peace out of that video for what we're anticipating. Uh, today, we're working on Melanie Hines. Uh, we had a few scheduling issues as um, uh, Lloyd Brunson, we were supposed to have Wednesday, he had a family emergency, please pray for him that that works out well. Tentatively, we're working on a reschedule with him for uh, Wednesday, 31st of the month. So we have to shift some things around. Uh, also, Rod Steele was supposed to be this week. He's now gonna be on Monday. So we'll get that show out to you. I know some of you are anticipating that. Tuesday, we have ever faithful friend Nick Benyamin and, and the wonderful Denise Bolin on Tuesday, and we're working tentatively for Wednesday for Melissa Redpill. Then at the end of the month, John Baxter, Lewis Herms, and then of course, the aforementioned Lloyd Brunson. So that concludes the January lineup. We also have some equally exciting interviews scheduled already for February, which I think you're really gonna like. Okay, now into the juicy information that you all anticipate. And I'm gonna run it down in order from all the stuff that we put on Telegram. Okay, so the Central Bank of Iraq plans to cancel the dollar selling platform by 2024. Now, they initially they said January 1st. Here's where we have to break down the information. I told you on Telegram I was going to break it down. Here it is. Just like in the U.S., our fiscal year starts October 1st. If you're going by the normal calendar, do you think it's the fourth quarter? And by the calendar of everyday life, it is. But economically, just for those of you who don't already know this, the new fiscal year globally typically starts October 1st, particularly here in the U.S. and in Europe. Likewise, for Iraq, their new fiscal year starts April 1st. And this is traditionally in the past when they have revalued their currency. This last year, when they did a small revalue to 1300, which is nothing, it was just to prove they could do it. Uh, that was in February. So it doesn't mean we're waiting till April. Could we be? Possibly. But they're telling you that's the back wall. And they could do it anywhere between now and then. You don't need to panic. You just need to understand how things correlate, which is what we're here to help you to do, at least for our portion. So they're telling you the back wall. So um, their budget, they were talking about the end of the budget for 2023 extenuates to March 31st of this year. So their new fiscal year is always April 1st. Just know that. It's a key piece of information. Following on the backs of that, most of you know, Saudi Arabia uh, cleared the hurdles for Iraq to join the WTO, the World Trade Organization. In order to do that, they have to come off a program rate, which is a controlled, suppressed, corrupt rate, which they've been on for 14 years plus, and they have to come back on the international stage with the new rate. So you put these two pieces together and you start to see hopefully how they correlate. So <clears throat> we need to be watching closely with Iran. Uh, speaking of Iran, uh, this week, as we report, and other people have reported accurately, that uh, the Pakistani and Jordanian governments are, the military specifically, are attacking Iran's uh, military and government. So pressure is being exerted from both sides. We also need to keep a close eye on Israel when they make their grave mistake, as I've said many times before, attacking the secret nuclear power plants in said Iran. So we need to watch how the Middle East goes. As our eyes come off of Iraq into the Middle East, when we're not watching Iraq, that's when it's going to happen. Citigroup lays off uh, more losses of job losses, according to uh, CEO Fauser addressing managing directors. That translates to 20,000 jobs over the next two years, which contributes to a $1.8 billion loss. It's chum change to them, but makes a ripple effect in the economy because other banks are going to follow suit. As you may have seen, Prince William is set to take over the throne as King Charles steps down due to a medical issue. Where does that sound familiar? The Biden. We uh, we see what happens in Europe and throughout the world translates back to the U.S. I'd be watching that closely if I were you. Argentinian president, as you know, this week went at the World Economic Forum in Davos, as did Sudani of Iraq. First time in many years, by the way, absolutely slaying the World Economic Forum, saying that socialism is an abject failure and that we're living in the greatest time in economic history starting this year. That was a big calm right there. And complementing that information, President Putin in the Kremlin deeply regrets Argentina's decision to not join the BRICS and is asking them to reconsider. So we have to ask ourselves, is that about to happen or is that already happened and this is just playing out in front of scenes? 
stay tuned. We'll all find out together. Well, that's the, the mainstay of the information for today. If anything significant breaks, as always, I'll come over this weekend. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Have a great and safe weekend. And if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe and share. It does help the channel grow. Thanks again. Have a great day.